Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Nicholas Richardson and this is the news. President Andrzej Duda, together with the presidents of Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia, met Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky in Kiev today. They discussed forms of additional support for Ukraine and the possibility of imposing further sanctions on Russia. In turn, United States President Joe Biden called Russian crimes in Ukraine genocide. Along with President Andrzej Duda, the presidents of Lithuania, Gitanas Naiseda, Latvia, Egils Levirs and Estonia, Ala Karis, boarded the train to Kiev. With the support of Ukraine, which is fighting for freedom and independence, with symbolic support, with political support, with urgent talk of material support, I remind you that all the countries that are going here, including Poland, are giving Ukraine support of a humanitarian, and not necessarily humanitarian, nature. German President Frank-Walter Steinmeier also wanted to visit Kiev, but according to the German Daily Bild, the Ukrainian president refused to meet him. The reason was said to be, among other things, the German president's close ties with Russia. Steinmeier is considered to be the architect of the friendship between the two countries. President Zelensky has appealed to the European Union for the next package of sanctions to block effectively financial flows from Russian banks. Russia enjoys privileges in structures such as the United Nations Security Council. On the other hand, the Russian leadership absolutely does not believe that Europe is capable of forcing Russia to make peace. They are counting on the fact that European countries will not be unanimous on sanctions because some of them will not want to give up their comfortable life. US President Joe Biden, during a speech in Iowa yesterday, called the actions of the Russians in Ukraine genocide. He said this in the context of high fuel prices in the United States, which he described as Putin's race. Whether a dictator declares war and commits genocide in a half a world away, to help deal with this Putin price hike, I've authorized the release of one million barrels per day for the next six months. The United States leader stands by his words. French President Emmanuel Macron referred to Biden's words. I choose my words carefully because this is about brotherly nations. What is happening is madness. It is extremely violent. It is a return of war in Europe. At the same time, I observe the facts and I want to continue to try to stop the war and restore peace. I am not sure that verbal escalation serves that cause. France and Germany are among the European states that have deepened their mutual relations with the Russian Federation, most strongly in recent years. Professor Grzegorz Gorski points out that although the refusal to receive the German president is a drastic step, it expresses Kiev's dissatisfaction with Berlin's insufficient actions, if only in the context of sanctions. It would be more incomprehensible to try to put aside such an outrageous attitude, which the German media have already criticized, than to refuse him in this invitation. In turn, the visit to Kiev of the leaders of the Baltic states shows the support of these countries for Ukraine and the awareness that after Russia's invasion of that country, they could be next. Professor Gorski adds that the eastern flank of NATO must continue to be strengthened. These actions should go precisely in the direction of such an urgent strengthening of the NATO presence. A few days ago, the media reported on Sweden's desire to join NATO. Today, the Prime Minister of Finland declared that within a few weeks, a decision will be made whether Helsinki should join the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. The 49th day of Russian aggression against Ukraine. According to the latest information, at least 21,000 civilians have been killed in Mariupol. Russian soldiers are committing crimes against innocent people every day. There are reports that the Russians have started to burn the corpses of dead residents in mobile crematoria to hide the traces of their crimes. The chemical weapons most likely used in Mariupol and the cluster and thermobaric weapons are all banned by international law, and their use by Russian military violates international conventions. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky called again today for an urgent and decisive response from international leaders. The mayor of Mariupol, Vadim Boychenko, has reported that Russian soldiers are burning the corpses of slain residents in mobile crematoria to hide the traces of the crime. According to our estimates, the number of civilian victims in Mariupol may reach 21,000. We know, and there is evidence of this, that bodies are disappearing from the streets. We know that there are places where the Russians hide them and then plan to destroy the evidence of the torture they carried out in our city. We call it genocide. We call it a war crime. Yesterday, Russian missiles hit a residential area near Kharkiv airport, causing a fire and destroying residential buildings. I was at work when my wife called and said that our house had ceased to exist. Thank God my son and my wife survived. 
not watching. I was at home when it happened. A powerful explosion ripped off the garage door. The bang was terrible. We had double windows in the house, and the explosion tore them off along with the frames. The Russians say they came to protect us. A big thank you to Putin. I have nothing more to say. Barvenkovo, a small town in the Kharkiv region, just a few kilometers from the border with the Donetsk region, has also been under fire for a week. Due to the regrouping of Russian troops, the Ukrainian authorities suspect that the worst is yet to come. It has been almost three weeks since there was fighting around Izium in eastern Ukraine. We see the equipment coming, we hear the sound of it. Recently there was a fire that lasted about 20 minutes. Now it is quiet. When it is quiet for too long, we get suspicious. Every day, more information arrives about the scale of the crimes committed by the Russians throughout Ukraine. Women and underage girls are often being raped by Russian soldiers. Exhumations of mass graves continue in the city. During the occupation of Bucha, Russian forces shot at people only because they spoke Ukrainian, helped as volunteers, or supported our armed forces. Russian forces killed peaceful civilians. I assure you that Ukrainian law enforcement agencies will reach out to anyone who committed these bloody crimes. Russian crimes require a strong Western response. This is yet another red line which, despite rearmament and all the efforts of the West, Ukraine will cross. The use of this weapon means that Ukraine may become completely defenseless because this weapon kills and kills at an express pace. And probably Ukraine has no tools to defend itself against it at the moment. So if there is no decisive Western reaction, I fear that this will mean another slaughter in Ukraine and more victims. As satellite images indicate, Russian troops are concentrated in eastern Ukraine around Donetsk and in the Luhansk region. The Russians have abandoned their attempt to capture the Ukrainian capital Kiev. However, they are doubling their troops in at least three places near the Ukrainian border and are moving towards Donbass. Today is the 82nd anniversary of the Katyn massacre. In the spring of 1940, the NKVD murdered 22,000 representatives of the Polish elite. Three years later, the Germans announced the discovery of mass graves in the Katyn forest. We know full well that the genociders want to pretend that nothing happened, to pretend that a return to normality is absolutely possible. Just forget about the dead. We do not accept this. This is torture. Death pits like the ones the Soviet criminals dug for our heroes in 1940. Today, their heirs, the murderers from Russia, are doing the same in Ukraine. The Russians did not admit to the crime and blamed the Germans. It was only after the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1990 that documents came to light stating that this was a deliberate act of the Soviet state. On the 10th of April, President Andrzej Duda stressed that the Katyn massacre should be defined as genocide in the context of international law and be met with legal consequences in court. Dynamo Kiev's exile squad won 3-1 in a friendly game against Poland's Legia Warszawa in the Polish capital on Tuesday to offer fans a brief distraction from the war back home. Most of the Ukrainian side's players were taken out of the country to safety after the Russian invasion, and they are now embarking on a series of charity games under the manner Match for Peace, Stop the War. Dynamo won 3 1, and afterwards, their striker, Artem Besedin, said it was the first time in his career he did not know how to celebrate scoring a goal. Fans were able to choose how much to pay for their tickets, ranging from 8 to 25 euros. I um, expect a lot, a lot of uh, cheers today from me and from my family. And who will win? Uh, we'll win, of course, peace. Uh, so briefly... We came to cheer for our country and to express our opinion on what is happening in our country. What's happening there really hurts. And it hurts that our father is not with us. He stayed in Kyiv. We came here to support Ukraine and we want to say no to war. I think that this unity that we've had today, both in the stands and on the pitch, it was visible. The game itself followed fair play regulations. The players played well and that was our goal, to give our fans at least a little bit of joy and let them forget about the sorrow and war for at least one and a half hours. That's the news. Thank you for watching. Stay with us for the weather, Poland Daily Business and more programmes. But from me, it's have a good night and a better tomorrow.